May 20th, Believe Nation. It's a special day for me because today's my birthday. I was born on May 20th. I turned 41 years old today. I'm going to do something really special for you guys. People have asked me over the years, hey, what do you want for your birthday? And I don't really like receiving presents. I don't really like to celebrate. It's not part of what I do. Uh, maybe you can relate. Maybe you think I'm crazy. So last year, what I did was I launched a Best Life 30 series. And the idea here was if I only had 30 videos left on my channel, 30 videos that could change your life, what would those 30 videos be? And we, we launched the Best Life 30 series on my birthday last year. This year, we're going to do something also very special called the Billionaire Mindset. So my team and I, but mostly my team, they've been going crazy. They've been working really hard over the past a uh, little while to make this series happen every day for the next 30 days is a video helping you get the billionaire mindset. We've come through all the videos to put together the best of the best of the best that if you want to change your mindset inside of 30 days, if you want to start thinking bigger, if you want to start attracting more wealth and success into your life, if you want to actually start to make it happen, this is the video series for you. Now, there's a link to join in the description below. It's absolutely free to sign up. If you put your email down there, you're going to get a daily link to the, today's video. And also, you're going to get a PDF companion calendar to show you what is super important every single day. So uh, again, 100% free to join. Go look at the link in the description below to get on. So for the next 30 days, we're going to teach me and you how to think like a billionaire. A lot of the problems that I think we face is our environment isn't isn't great. You have people around you who are not thinking big, who are not thinking billion dollar level, who if you tell them you're going to start a six figure company, they're probably laughing at you or saying you can't do it or it's not possible or there's no way someone like you could actually make that happen. We're not talking six figures here. We're not talking seven figures here. We're talking a billion dollar plus business. And so the fastest way to start to change your mindset, to change your belief systems, to change how you see the world and how you show up because you know that you're capable of more, right? I know I'm capable of more. I'm making this series for me as well. You know you're capable of more. You are probably the most ambitious person of the people that you know. You're the person that people come to asking for advice, encouragement, support, optimism. But who's pouring into you? Who is pouring into you in a loving but but push forward to say, I can do more. You can do more. You're capable of much more than what you're doing right now. So the fastest way to actually start to shift that is to be around the people who are doing that. So I don't know, maybe you already know some billionaires that you can hang out with every day. I'm not calling billionaires, you know, on the phone every day. So this is my best attempt <laughs> for me to learn as well as for you to be able to, to learn in the process. So again, it's for the next 30 days, 100% free. We're going to email you a link to the video. There's a link in the description below. You can go click on it. You'll get the email every day as well as the companion calendar bonus PDF that you can print off and have next to you of the most important things that are coming every single day. Let me give you a quick taste of what's to come. So, so there's 30 days. We've divided it into five different sections. Each section has six different videos in it. So section number one is habits and habits is what are the habits that these billionaires do consistently? They wake up, they have the same number of hours every single day, but they do different things than you and I do. So what are the habits? We're going to go through six different ones. We're going to look at the morning habits that they have. We're going to look at the wealth habits that they have. We're going to look at the routines that they have, the wake up habits that they have, the meditation mindfulness habits that they have, and then the environmental success habits that they create for themselves to start having a more productive, more successful day, life, business, and so on. Okay, section one is all about habits. Section two, we're going to dive in to talk about mindset. What is the billionaire mindset? Again, six videos. The first one is on the mind. The second is on the beliefs. What are the beliefs that you have to have? What do billionaires believe that is different than you and I? And how can we start to adopt some of those? How do they stay motivated is the third video. How do billionaires get motivated every day? How do they overcome rejection is the fourth video in that series. We're going to get lots of rejection over the years. How did the billionaires actually go and, and not that be a huge setback for them? The next one is how do they never quit? How do they not quit after all the failures, rejection, all of it, the, the sometimes lack of motivation? How do they keep going and not quit? And then the last one is how do they overcome fear? How do billionaires overcome fear? Because they're just human, just like you, just like me. They are human. They have fears. How do they overcome them? 
that's what we're going to dive into with that video. So the whole first section is on habits. The second section is on mindset. The next section is on skills. Again, six videos in skills. What are the skills that you need to have that these billionaires have? Because again, they wake up, they have the same 24 hours in a day. They chances are started with less than what you already have right now, but they have different skill sets that they've honed in and acquired. So what are they? So we're going to look at the abilities that they've acquired. The, the top 10 abilities and skills that they have acquired that they've mastered that you need to as well. How do they network? How do they network? How, how can you network like a billionaire and start to build up the people who are around you? The third one is how do they stay productive? How can they wake up and be so productive? Again, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, but billionaires use that time more effectively than you and I do. So how do they stay productive? The fourth is how do they set goals? How do they set goals and follow through on their goals? We have goals, they have goals, but they seem to have bigger goals and they seem to get their goals done <laughs> more than maybe you and I do. So how do they approach goal setting and then actually following through on it? The fifth video here is about focus. How do you stay focused when you got so many ideas, so much creativity, so many opportunities, you might be drowning in opportunities, so are they. They're, they are drowning in opportunities, but they stay focused. How do they do it? That's gonna be that video. And the last one in the skills section is gonna be about learning. How do they learn? What do they learn? What did they consume? How can you hack learning like they learn so that you can start to acquire the skills and abilities that you need to start achieving your success? The next big section is around business. We need to start thinking like a billionaire, not just in terms of our habits, our mindset, our skills, but how do we become better business people? How do we become better entrepreneurs, right? You're here, you wanna build a company, you wanna have a big impact. That's what this section is all about. So. The first video in this section is going to be about investing. How do you invest like a billionaire? How do billionaires think about money? And how do they use that to grow their own wealth and the wealth of the people around them? The second one is around the biggest lessons that they learned early in their life. So if you're in the startup phase or you're, you know you're capable of just so much more and you feel like you're in the startup phase compared to where you could be, this video is going to talk about some of the lessons that they wish they learned earlier. The third one is going to be about success. What are, the, what are the success principles that they live by that's helped them explode their businesses? The fourth one is about customers. How can you get more customers? We've got great ideas, great vision, great, great energy, great spirit, great heart, great soul. We wanna make a giant impact, but we need customers. <laughs> so how do billionaires get customers for their companies? The fifth one is about marketing. How do we market? How do billionaires market? How do they think about marketing? How do they approach marketing? How do they get people to know about their business, know about their brand, get people to come in? Most entrepreneurs struggle with marketing. Again, you could have a great product or service, but without good marketing, you don't have a real business. So we're gonna learn from billionaires how to market ourselves. And the last one in the business section is around leadership. How do you lead? You've got a big mission, big dream, big goals. You can't do this alone. You need to have people around you to help you accomplish this mission of yours. And so you have to learn the leadership skills to really guide this team forward. And so we're going to we're going to learn from these billionaires who've done it, who have built giant teams, who have built billion dollar plus, you know, businesses, and we're going to learn how they do it so that you can apply those strategies immediately into your life, into your business, into your team as well. But we are not done yet. There's still one more section. This is crazy, right? So the last one is on growth growth we all want growth we want to feel like we're growing we're learning we're improving we're getting better so in this final section on growth we're going to learn about passion how do you find your passion how do you tap into your passion how do you stay connected to your passion so you can show up as your best self every single day the next video is going to be on failures how do you overcome the failures you're going to have setbacks you're going to have failures you're going to have ideas that don't work out how do you bounce back how do you keep going how do you get off the mat and show up another day how do the billionaires do it that you can learn from the next one is gonna be about working hard. How can you show up and be committed and work hard every day on not just your business, but on building the life that you want for yourself? The next one is gonna be on discipline. So how do you stay disciplined? How do you stay on track, on target, even when you wanna quit, even when it's hard, even when you feel like the world might be against you or there's some giant setback, how can you keep that discipline up? The next video is on risk. How do billionaires see risk that is different than us? I think a lot of times we see things as you have to take some giant impossible risk, but is that how they actually see risk? And how do they minimize the risk? And how do they actually show up and start getting results in the face of that potential risk? And then the last video in the series is gonna be about books. What are the books that they read? What are the learning styles that they have? And what are the must read books 
that billionaires recommend reading because when you start to learn like they learn, you start to think like they think. How does that sound for you? Is that crazy? I'm excited to see all these videos. It's been a blast putting them together. These are going to be deep videos to help you go and really understand the billionaire mindset. That That's the point of this. It's been a lot of work from the team putting it together. And I really want to change the environment that you're in. If any of those videos sounded interesting for you, you're going to love the entire series. Imagine waking up every day and having new content from the people who you look up to who've accomplished the goals that you want for yourself. So if you want to join me for the next 30 days and get the billionaire mindset, the link to join for free is right there next to me. Go click it. You get the bonus PDF calendar as well. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. To create a new culture means you have to define your culture as a vision of the future. But most people, their cultures are based on the past present reality. What does that mean? We are in a changing world. And the world is changing faster than most people can keep up. And if you are going to stay defined by a memory of the past, you will not keep up with this culture. What defines the vision of the future to change a culture and the answer is a very clear intention a clear purpose combined with an elevated emotion and when you combine a clear intention like a vision of the future along with an elevated emotion of inspiration and joy you will create an empowered individual but here's the problem to the materialist who's waiting for their wealth to show up to feel abundant, they're in their past. The person who's waiting for the success to feel empowered is in their past. The person who's waiting for their healing to feel wholeness, they're in their past. The person who's waiting for their riches to come to feel gratitude, they're in their past. They're materialists. In other words, you have to feel empowered in order for your success to show up. You have to feel abundant for your wealth to find you. <laughs> you have to be in gratitude for you to create the life that you want. And by you teaching your body emotionally what that future could feel like ahead of the actual experience is changing your biology because most people wait for something outside of them to change how they feel inside of them. And when something outside of them changes how they feel inside of them, they pay attention to whoever or whatever caused that, and they create a memory. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect, waiting for something outside of you to take your pain away inside of you. The new model of reality is about causing an effect. That means then you have to feel gratitude every day for your new experience to occur. You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You have to be empowered to create the success. And when you teach people how to do this and they move into a new state of being, they begin to create the life that they want. Because when you bring up an elevated emotion, you will see the vision clearly. And leaders in history that changed the world knew how to change a culture. Look at Martin Luther King. He talked about justice and then got enough people inspired that they felt empowered enough to do something about it. People came out of the resting state. And so then you share the same brain as Martin Luther King and being defined by a vision of the future begins to change a culture. So the future then is created by a clear intention and an elevated emotion. Now listen closely. 
that you have to cultivate in your inner environment of thoughts and feelings. And getting a person beyond the old self then is the great work. That's what we're here for. We've studied motivation and I can tell you without a doubt that the highest form of motivation in any culture, in any group of people, is what's called purpose motivation, duty motivation, or mission motivation. You know what that is? To have a vision to change a culture that's bigger than you, to instill change in the world. Look at Elon Musk. He created an electric car that can go from zero to 60 in less than five seconds and before him electric cars were like golf carts that cr you know crawled along the road and he said I'm gonna do this I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I have a vision and I'm gonna get the best engineers in the world I'm gonna get a group of people to share the same vision as me I'm gonna change the world by changing our reliance on oil and I am going to make a difference in the world and I am going to make a lot of money. Why not? And so people said, no, that's not possible. And he held on to that vision. And now Motor Trend magazine never rated a car a close to 100. They rated the Tesla car 103. It's the best car on the road. And it relies on no gas at all. That's a vision of the future. High motivators are some people who have a vision bigger than them that are going to change the world and make a difference in a culture. That's the highest form of motivation. We know from our research that people who have purpose motivation have a vision that's bigger than, bigger than them, that are personally convicted, have a great sense of morality, a great sense of ethics because it falls right in alignment. People who have purpose motivation, have personal convictions, have a strong sense of ethics, naturally receive recognition. It's the end product. If you have a vision that's bigger than you, that's to change something, where you contribute to the whole, you have strong personal conviction, a strong sense of ethics, already receiving recognition and don't even need it, the money always comes. It's the natural flow. And we call that in our work affluence. You know what the word affluence means? To flow to you. People who are affluent don't go and get anything. People who are affluent have it come to them. That's who they are. It's a reflection of their state of being. So then, when you have a purpose or a vision or a mission or an intent that's bigger than you, it means it signifies something that's ongoing. You could have a purpose to go east, and there's never an end to east. You could have a purpose to be healthy. There's always more health to have. You could have a purpose to be wealthy. There's a never an end to wealth. You could have a purpose for knowledge, and there's never an end to knowledge. It signifies a direction. My purpose is to transform individuals in order to transform a culture. And I'm clear on that purpose, and it gets me up in the morning every single day. I came across SOMA, and it completely changed my life. If you're in
back straight, eyes closed, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feeling that power, that power you have, your determination to control your breathing. that same power, that same determination to see in our minds the image, the visions that we want to create today in our lives. Let's see ourselves doing the best we can on all of the stretches and exercises we do together here. that power we have, our true being, our presence, our determination to see in our mind right now, go into the future. Oh, I'm just playing. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. This is all body weight. This is Yada. That's me, Tabata, with the baby. So we're about to get this in. You guys gonna jog in place in five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go. I did not want this playlist. What just happened? Oh well, we're gonna use it. I'm gonna make y'all watch them because they be acting, see they be acting shy on camera, but off camera, they be doing the most. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that right? Yeah. So we're doing all body weight exercises today. For your legs, your shoulders, some core work, some plyo, all the things. Five, four, three, two, and one. Squat down and up. Warm it up your legs a little bit. Keep your chest up, bring your butt down. Put your butt back towards the couch or your kitchen or wherever you at. If you need to go wider, you go wider in your stance. It's always an option. 15 seconds, lift and squeeze. Chest up, butt down, big knees. Put your butt back. Five, three, two, and one. Stay down here. Walk out, walk back. Stay down. Okay? It's my loss in the walk out. Your legs are wide. Let it go. Yes, walk out. Uh huh. 15 seconds. Yeah. Last 10. Before we hold the plank, 5, 4, 3, 2, Hold your plank. Reach and reach. Put your hips to the sky. High plank. Get it up. Opposite hand. Opposite leg. And one. 
30 seconds. Grab some water. New move alert. High plank hold. What's up, fam? Oh yeah, we getting it in, bro. We here daily with the baby. All right, ladies, go on high plank. This is a power thing still. Your arms are not on your shoulders. So get ready to run through your smile. Get your butt not here. Three, two, and one, hold the plank. That's it. We just hold it. No movement. Abs engaged. It's gonna be your plank progression. Put your heels back. Five, three, two, and one. Ten seconds. Just ready to be from a shoulder tap, right and left. You know the rules. Three, two, and one. Shoulder tap. Take your time. Keep it up. So try not to do this. Okay? That's not the move. Core, tight. Use your core to keep you stable. Okay? Three, two, and one. On your forearm. Low plank hold. Low plank hold. Three, two, and one. That's it. Start that, ladies. Keep it you guys at home you should be looking like that right there. Uh, ten seconds. Five, three, two, and one. All right, your progression. High plank, low plank. Uh, uh, here we go. Three, two, and one. You high, low, high. Down, down, up, up. Come on. Challenge yourself. If it don't challenge you, it won't change you. Get out your comfort zone. Three, two, and one. All right. Round two. From the top. Hold the plank. Five, three, two, and one. Come on, this is the work. Three, two, and one. Low plank hold. Three, two, and one. Four arms. And tight. Don't blow something out. Right there. Hey! You got the feeling here, you your core. Three, two, and one. Hold the plank. Three, two, and one. High plank, low plank. Go in Five, three, two, and one. Let's go. Ten seconds. Come on, that on. Three, two, and one. All right. You ready, round three? Easy stuff. High plank hold last time. Three, two, and one. Yeah, Three, two, and one. Let's go. 
is it. 30 seconds. Come on, y'all. Go, go. Straight work. You know what I mean? For the people that say they don't got time. You make time for what you want. If it's important, if it's not cool, just own it. But don't lie to yourself. Take control of our minds. You feel that? That's you. The real you. That's our consciousness. Our being awake fully. To control our minds. To control our breathing. Pure 
determination of who and what you really are. With this power, this peace right here in this moment right now, we can always have all the mind health, even greater I love your determination. Great work today. I'm so proud of you. Wherever you are, take the power of this time we had together, apply it to everything in your life. It doesn't matter whether we're in school, at work, wherever we are. The gym of life never ends. And life is the greatest teacher. That's why I love you and everything and all the infinite intelligence around us. It's life. It's always here. You're always learning, always growing. I love your determination. Have a great day, week, and life always. Until next time. I believe that everyone has the potential to become rich. But why are the resources found only in the hands of a few? This is one of the questions that comes up often. But I think the answer is not far-fetched. The rich people have learnt powerful skills and timeless principles that they practice every day and this has allowed them to remain rich. These skills and principles which they have mastered is what separates them from everyday people. It is what makes them remain in riches. Circumstances may change, but principles remain the same. Here are a few of those principles. Principle 1. Rich people think abundance, but poor people think lack. The rich have a completely different mindset when it comes to how to make money. It begins from how they think. Scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. One thing the rich have been able to master is their act of thinking. They understand that their thoughts would breed actions and their actions would breed results. They understand the first law of success, which is first within, then without. Who you have become on the inside will be reflected on the outside. When you realize that most people are poor, it is good for you to make up your mind that you won't go along that mind path that they have chosen to follow. Principle 2 Rich people see opportunity, poor people see problems. Imagine a teacher who got an appointment to teach at a secondary school, and he had to teach the senior class, the ones preparing for their final exams. He taught them throughout the term, and after they had written the exams, a large number of them failed and had to repeat the class. The teacher could react to this by saying, I don't even understand why these students are so dull. After all my efforts of teaching, they still failed. Yet, another teacher comes and sees the amount of failure among the students and he immediately recognizes an opportunity to make money while imparting positively into the lives of these students. This can be done either by writing a book on practical guides to passing their exams excellently well or he organizes extra classes for the students where they have to pay an extra token to get coaching for their exams. The difference between the two teachers is that one saw a problem and the other saw an opportunity. Principle 3. Rich people allow the interest on their investment to compound. The truth is, no matter how great talent or efforts, some things just take time, Warren Buffett says. Building wealth is one of them. There is always a time interval between the time you make investments and when your investments will yield dividends. The rich understand the law of delayed gratification. The rich understand the principles of compound interest and they make it work for them. They simply take the interest that accrues from an initial capital invested and put it back into the business to generate more profit from the initial profit. Principle 4. Rich people mind their associations while the poor don't. 
It is said that your network will determine your net worth. Rich people are careful and deliberate in creating a particular kind of network around them. People with empires in their mind. People whose ideas, if worked on and invested in, will become gold mines. Even the scripture says, He who works with the wise will be wise. Spending time with wealthy people is vital if you want to succeed financially. You'll be amazed at how your perspective changes when you hear people talking about how much they make in a single day. I heard the story of Jackie Kennedy, the once upon a time wife of John F. Kennedy, when she said, If I was broke, I know what I will do to get back on my feet. I will go to the most expensive restaurants in New York, buy myself a glass of water, and eavesdrop on the conversations of the rich. They are careful not to keep within their circle of friends people who are myopic in their thinking. This is how important your association can be. And Principle 5. Rich people make their money work for them, while the poor work for money. A very large number of people work for money. This is because of the impression that they were given while growing up. That to become successful, you must study hard, get good grades, go to the best schools, secure a good paying job, and save until you retire. There is nothing wrong with all of this, as long as you are fulfilled. But Robert Kiyosaki says, the problem with this approach is that you only make money as long as you work. He said, the only thing of value that you have to exchange is your time. But when we exchange our time for money, our earning potential is limited because you can only make money while at your job. And so, to make more money, you have to work longer hours, which is physically taxing. He says that the rich dad told him, the poor and the middle class work for money, while the rich have money work for them. They do this by learning to invest and then putting their money in assets like businesses and investments that generates passive income until they reach the point where they don't have to work anymore. They simply spend their money on assets while the poor spends theirs on liabilities. Here are two seeds, both planted on the same day, in the same soil, in the same garden bed. One is very curious, full of life and ready to grow as tall as it can. The other is filled with fear. What if the sun is too strong and burns my leaves once I grow, it thinks? Or what if a beast eats my tender sprouts? No way, not a chance I am leaving my shell. So, it remains still and stagnant, rigid in its place. The brave seed feels the heat of the sun above and starts to push hard out of its shell. Sure, it has doubts about reaching the outside world, but its curiosity is stronger than anything. I want to see all the living creatures of this garden, it thinks. I can't wait to feel the morning dew drops on my leaves. The little seed keeps pushing until a single sprout comes out. It grows and grows through sunny warm days. It even grows through colder stormy days because the brave seed knows that the sun will always return. Throughout life you will have moments when you feel like either one of these seeds. The way we see the world around us and how we behave towards life is called our mindset. You can choose to have a fixed mindset or to have a growth mindset. When you have a fixed mindset, things can seem too hard. 
Negative thoughts might cloud your mind and you start to give up easily. I can't do this. You may believe that if you are not good at something, then you never will be. I'm just born this way. The obstacles you face can hold you back. And you begin avoiding challenges. What's the point of trying? Just like the fearful seed. However, you can always choose to have a growth mindset. A growth mindset helps you believe that your goals are within reach with effort and perseverance. Life is a great big adventure. It shows you that failure is a normal part of your journey. The obstacles you encounter will only make you stronger. Challenges and mistakes help me learn. You'll enjoy the challenges you face and become more resilient. I want to become my best self. Just like the brave seed. Fear is a natural emotion. We all experience it and it can make changing your mindset difficult. The important thing is to try. So here are some tips to switch on your growth mindset. Perfection does not exist. Aiming for perfection is like running a race without a finishing line. Trying to achieve it will only exhaust you. When negative thoughts fill your head, you can turn them around by simply adding yet at the end. See challenges as adventures. They will make you more resilient and can open new worlds. If you work hard, you will see progress. And don't worry about mistakes. They are a part of life and we can learn from them. The good news is the sun always comes out after a storm. By having a growth mindset, you might even find that a little rain won't bother you much at all.